Hello lovely people! Welcome to another book chat, the regular roundup of stuff I've read at some point in my past. I've got four books to talk about this week. Shall we dive in? I'm going to kick things off with Girls Against God by Yeni Haval, which is translated by Mayam Idris. I don't even really know how to give you a brief plot summary of this book because the plot summary that I read at the, in the blurb is like technically correct but also like doesn't really encapsulate all of this book. We're sort of following this girl who's grown up in southern Norway and she is really railing against a lot of the um, stifling attitude of southern Norway and that sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of talk in this about hate about how she hates God, that sort of thing. Um, she is uh, really in the like black metal scene. There's a lot of writings on like art and music and expression. She keeps coming back to trying to write this film script. Um, but as this goes on, it gets increasingly surreal and bizarre and that sort of thing. And so you have sort of like a melding of um, writing style. At one point you're like reading the script that she has written. Um, at other points it's like she's really like going like analysing art and stuff like this. At other points you're going down these really um, surreal and imaginative like um, sort of melding of reality and that sort of thing. It was a, a weird book, but I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, I have talked about this in much more depth. Um, my friend Mark and I have a podcast together. He bought me this book not just so we could talk about it, but so that we could also do a podcast episode on it. So I will leave a link to that down below because we go into a lot of depth, like unpacking this book, what we like about it, what we struggled with about it, and that sort of thing. Um, to summarise my feeling, this is a book where I liked parts of it. Um, I also didn't fully understand a lot of it, and it's not a criticism, it's sort of that I feel like I would like someone to like really sit me down and give me like a lecture on this book. <laughs> um, where I struggled, I think, is as it got more surreal, there is a lot of um, imagery and description of stuff to do with bodily fluids, there's like some body horror, stuff like that, and that is something that I really don't like, and I just don't like to consume, so I really struggled with that aspect. Um, and and I just sometimes felt like I just didn't really understand what was happening, <laughs> which is totally fine. Um, so I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. It's a book that now I have talked to my friend about it um, and heard why he loved it. Uh, I definitely really appreciate hearing that and um, it's it's talking to him reminded me of all the aspects that I liked about this, I think, because I think when I finished reading this, I was sort of left with that I don't really know what I've read feeling um, and so having this conversation where we really dived in depth into it all um, really helped me sort of remember the aspects that I liked and that sort of thing so um, an interesting read definitely a book that I'm interested in hearing how other people feel about because I feel like it potentially could be quite divisive um, yeah you know you read things and you're just like this is an experience and I feel like I have had a time that is interesting to discuss. So if you want more actual like analysis and stuff, please do listen to that podcast episode because we talk about it in a lot more depth. Um, but yeah, I don't really know how to end it. <laughs> I also read on uh, my phone, on Libby, um, Arrow of God by Chinua Chibi. This is the third book in his African trilogy. I've read the first book. I didn't read the second book because it wasn't available on Libby. <laughs> Um, but I, I, my understanding was that the third book you can read without having read the second book. Although the second book follows um, the same family as the first book, the third book follows completely new people. Chinua Achibi is a Nigerian writer. So we're following this guy, Azulu, who is a uh, head priest for this god, Ulu. And um, there's sort of like six villages that are sort of focused on. And it follows um, some of the conflicts between these villages. And then also um, there's a real struggle essentially between like old ways and new ways in, in a multitude of different ways through um, explored through different characters. Um, because Azulu is an older man there's some conflicts with some of his sons um, who are going down different routes in life and um, there's also this conflict between um, the Igbo people and then um, the British who have essentially come in and have, want to change everything but very, it very much shows you that they, they've come in and they want to change everything, but they don't know what they want to change it to. They're squabbling between themselves with that. 
So there's this uh, real highlight of like colonialism and then also just the way that like the, the sheer disrespect of just being like, you're always wrong. We can't decide what way we want to change it to, but you're always definitely wrong. Also the ways in which like Christian missionaries were like really quick to sort of exploit situations to their gain and stuff like this. There's also Azulu himself who is sort of attempting to lead his people in a particular way, um, but will they be led by him? Um, there were just essentially, there were lots and lots of threads going on in this that were weaved together in a way that was really interesting. Depending on whose viewpoint you have, the narrative style sort of like obviously suits in each individual ca character. I really liked the um, parts that were told from the point of view of some of the Igbo people because um, there are so many colloquialisms, there's so many like colloquialisms and um, phrases and stuff that are used in conversation, um, lots of uh, emotions being described in like metaphorical way. Essentially I thought it was a really interesting uh, portrayal of this clash between sort of like traditional ways of living, um, the disruption of colonialism, and then also the way that, um, I don't know, like people can have very clear views of how they think um, they should act, but getting other people to act in the same way can be very hard. It was a very interesting book um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, after that I sort of had like an informative reading experience where two books informed each other. First one of those is The Outrun by Amy Liptrot. This is Amy Liptrot's memoir. She grew up in Orkney, which is like these uh, islands off the coast of Scotland, um, and uh, she then moved to London. And essentially, um, she's an alcoholic, and this goes into a lot of depth on her experiences with addiction, um, and really like essentially like hitting rock bottom. And then she moved back to Orkney and sort of um, attempted to rebuild herself. And that portion is very much focusing a lot on like the nature of Orkney. So it's it's part memoir about addiction and then also part nature writing. It will give heavy trigger warnings for um, addiction and alcoholism and discussions a lot about that. You know, she goes into a lot of depth about that because it is her life and that sort of thing. So um, definitely one to be aware of if those are things that might trigger you. I think my favourite parts of this was when she was rebuilding herself on Orkney. It was really interesting reading reviews of this actually because I went into this expecting a nature writing book. Um, and so I, it takes a while to get to the nature writing because um, until about like halfway through she's really discussing, you know, like her uh, experiences with addiction and that sort of thing. And then it's only when she returns to Orkney that then she starts to really like um, delve into things about Orkney, like the way she's, the way she's rebuilt herself is to, um, you know, be paying attention to the world around her and that sort of thing. So I loved all of the nature writing to do with Orkney because that's what I entered this book wanting. It was really interesting to read reviews on Goodreads of people who had entered this wanting to read a memoir about addiction and then they were really complaining about all of the nature writing, um, which was just really funny to me because I was like, that was my favourite bit. Um, so you know, your expectations going into a book very much inform your reading experience. And I really like admire the way that this like connecting back to where you're from can really like um, you know, root yourself and give yourself a basis to sort of build yourself back up and that sort of thing. So it was a really interesting book. Um, the one I then read that informed that is the Orkney Inga Saga, which is translated by Herman Paulson and Paul Edwards, which is a Norse saga about the history of the Earls of Orkney. Um, and I just thought that having got a better understanding of what Orkney, all the different islands, are physically like, it would be interesting to get a sense of their history. Um, this is a, a readable translation. I found it much more readable than I expected. Um, I will say it gets a little bit repetitive because it's the history of these earls and there's a lot of like similar things happening when they like have some squabbles about who should own what amount of land and then they like burn some people alive in a house and then they like go on some raids and stuff like that. So as sagas go, not a place I would suggest beginning with, but if you're someone who's really interested in sagas, if you're interested in Norse history, if you're interested in Orkney Isles, um, I do think it was immensely readable and I'm really glad I read it. And I'm glad I read it at the same time because this sort of like informing each other about Orkney was my favourite part of this whole narrative. Yeah, those are all the books I wanted to talk about. As per usual, I would love to hear your thoughts. Please do leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time for something different.